Not so fast, crackhead. But for real though, um, I really like that meme with uh, with Ian from Forgotten Weapons with a little little Calibri pistol, and he's like, "Not so fast, crackhead." But um, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, snubby here. It is a Taurus eight five six, not to be confused with the Smith and Wesson five eighty six, which I have here. Um, I know great great naming conventions by these companies, by the way. Super awesome when I'm trying to talk about the differences between the two. And I'm like, yeah, it's the eight five six versus the five eighty six, and the blah blah blah. You know. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I just want to talk about this little thing here because um, I have not owned a snub-nosed revolver in many, many, many years. And it's one of those guns that I really feel like it's, it's, like, it's a type of gun that um, no, no collection is really complete without, you know. Um, everyone should have a nice little snub-nosed revolver because it has a lot of practical use and um, they're, they're, just, they're just nifty, you know, because they're itty-bitty. But... Um, yeah, like I said, this one is a Taurus 856, and I know a lot of people are going to sneer and be like, oh, you know, Taurus this, Taurus that, whatever, fine. Um, to be honest, just like my Taurus TX-22 review, um, I've been impressed lately with uh, Taurus's kind of um, turning over a new leaf, you know, shall we say, with uh, their improvement of quality and um, quality control uh, standards and things like that. I mean, heck, even the, the CEO of the company was like, yeah, I admit we've made some pretty crap things in the past, but we're trying to make that better. And so far, that's what I've seen, with a little exceptions here and there. You know, not everything they make is perfect. Still, um, there's still plenty of issues I've seen with, uh, like the G2 and the G3 series of pistols that have uh, not been great, shall we say? Um, but you know, I figured one good turn deserves another because the TX22 has been just you know uh, fantastic for me. Everyone, everyone I know that. I've brought it out to the range with. They love shooting it. Um, it works very well suppressed. Um, you know, it's just been a great little piece. So I figured, you know what? Why not? Let me just, I, you know, I've been needing a stub nose revolver for a long, long time, but I didn't, want to, didn't really want to spend all that much money. Um, I, I'm not, I've never really been a fan of like the, the the shrouded hammer style, like the humpback style for the Smiths. Never really been a huge fan of those. I always like the traditional. Um, you know, full exposed hammer like that, even for snubbies. Because my very first snubby that I had uh, growing up was a Model 19, I think either Dash 2 or Dash 3. So very, very nice pistol. Uh, just awesome. I love shooting that thing. But right now it's currently being held hostage by my sister who is leaving it at the bottom of her underwear drawer. So uh, it never uses it, never, you know, it, it, it's, it's bone dry. She never shoots the damn thing and she refuses to relinquish it to me. The proper owner I would think but that gun has been in the family for as long as I can remember so it's the family gun it's not necessarily my gun but it's also not necessarily her gun but she doesn't quite see it that way so I have been deprived woe is me of, of having a decent snub nose revolver since then um, I've just never gone out of my way to go and get one but uh, recently a good friend of mine has been um, kind of egging me on a little bit uh, towards getting a snubby and I kind of you know, I miss having a snubby. I really do. So that's why I settled on this one because a local store had one for a good price and um, there was another weapon I wanted to get rid of. So uh, I traded it in basically towards this. Um, so I'm quite happy uh, with the purchase. Um, I'll have another shooting video as well, uh, separate from this one that sh shows me, you know, doing my thing, bang, bang, bang. And I'll even have some targets up there as well to demonstrate just what is, is possible for someone uh, with a snub nose revolver because never let anybody tell you that a snubby is an inherently inaccurate gun That's absolutely not the case um, You know, I learned this very quickly when uh, when I was shooting that model 19 um, I thought there's no way I could be accurate with this thing It's like it, it's got a super tiny little barrel the bolts are gonna go all over the place But this was also a long time ago before I knew better. Okay, so um, This thing is still capable of some Pretty impressive accuracy, I will say. Uh, just, just to give you a summary, um, I've put about 110 rounds through this, and uh, which, which is not much, but given the current ammo situation right now, can you really blame me? So uh, the accuracy I got at 25 yards with the standing in single action was right at around two and a quarter inch um, with some just regular, you know, 130 grain FMJ 38 special. Uh, ammo so nothing really crazy or like ultra super fancy defensive ammo or anything like that And still getting to get a pretty respectable group at that distance, especially with a snubby, right? So 
this thing is absolutely capable when it comes to accuracy. And I kind of jumped the gun a little bit there, but I just wanted to, to let people know that um, it is possible to shoot accurately with stun nose revolvers, in case you didn't know. Um, you know, these things are every bit as accurate just as anything else, but it's really more how well can you shoot? So, uh, yeah, so accuracy, I've been quite pleased with this. Um, and just kind of, you know, figuring out and discovering snub nose revolvers all over again. Uh, it's been a pleasant experience with this one for sure. That's not to say this is the highest quality revolver I've ever bought. Obviously not, because um, the, the revolvers that I'm used to shooting, you know, are my 586 Smith, which I absolutely adore. I love this gun. It is fantastic. I mean, just, oh, just look at that bluing, man. Just, mm, just really, really nice gun. And I don't really care what people say about the Hillary hole and whatever. It, it just, it, it doesn't bother me. Um, then, of course, I have my longtime friend here, my Colt Trooper Mark III, you know. These are the kinds of revolvers that I'm used to shooting, and I actually grew up shooting this one more than the Model 19. Um, so I'm definitely more of a Colt guy than I am a Smith guy. But, um, you know, these are the kinds of revolvers that I'm used to shooting. I've never had a Taurus revolver before. Um, so this is the first one I've had, and it shows, honestly, in the... Uh, the price for these things. So you gotta pay for what you get, but that's to be expected with Taurus. You're not you're not going out and spending 350 bucks, which is pretty much how much this costs now, um, to get an ultra super duper high quality, you know, knock your socks off kind of gun. It's just it's just not what it is. Um, there's nothing wrong with that because this thing has been 100% uh, functional for me. Uh, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, the action's not as smooth. Uh, it, it's you know the timing. You know, Timing's fine, but the, the whole like smoothness of the action, like just pulling the hammer back and the, the trigger pull, double action pull for it and everything, getting the getting the cylinder out, um, the 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 freeness of which the the, the cylinder here actually rotates on the arm, um, the smoothness of getting it in and out of the frame, and also the uh, cylinder release button itself here. All all of those little things taken together, you can definitely see that this is a lower priced firearm for a reason, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. Um, so just people are, are, are aware of that. I'm not bashing on this in any particular way. It's just understand what you're getting into more than anything. Um, don't be mad that you spent however much money on a Taurus revolver and you say, oh, it doesn't live up to the same you know quality as my super nice Smiths here or anything. Well, duh, of course it doesn't. Um, you're not paying the same amount of money. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I think this is very, very appropriately priced for what it is and the kind of performance that I got out of it. So it's not perfect by any means, but I was pleasantly surprised by how this shot, um, you know, because I haven't shot stubbies in a very, very long time. So I expected it to be a mostly unpleasant experience um, because stubbies are very hard to shoot well. Uh, anyone can tell you that, but uh, I was doing pretty okay with it. Um, recoil wasn't too bad because this is a all steel frame. Um, so it weighs a little bit more than like your Smith super, like super light air weights or whatever that have like aluminum frames and things like that. Um, I know Taurus even makes like the ultralight versions of these as well. Um, and then the polymer versions too. Um, those, those would probably be a little bit more unpleasant to shoot. Because I think the, the last snubby I ever shot was uh, uh, one of those Ruger uh, LCRXs, like the five shot, but it's 357 Magnum. So polymer frame, 357 Magnum, five shot, itty bitty tiny barrel, you know, um, putting full power 357 mag loads in that thing is like kind of... Ow, my hand, that stings a bit. Um, but no matter what loads I put through this, uh, it, it honestly wasn't that bad. This grip, this grip, even though it doesn't look like a whole lot, you're like, I mean, like, oh man, look at that, it looks like cheap rubber. Uh, it actually worked pretty darn well. If that's one thing Taurus, I think, is getting right, it's ergonomics uh, lately for all their new stuff. Um, this grip actually works pretty darn well, um, even though, you know, my pinky hangs off the edge here. Um, and it sits underneath like that. It still works quite well. Uh, sucks up the recoil nice and fine. I've had no issues with it. Um, even though my hands are pretty pretty decent size, uh, it's it's no problem with these, honestly. Uh, I don't even feel the need to change out the grips on this at all. I'm probably just going to keep this stock. Um, stock stocks, you know. So, uh, double action pull on this is honestly pretty heavy. Uh, like a lot of revolvers, it's not... Like I said, it's not really surprising in that aspect. Um, it's nothing to write home about. It's not going to be something that's going to blow your mind, but it is still perfectly functional. So I'll try to demonstrate that here. 
it's all it's all empty of course um, and I have a speed loader of step caps so what I found out is for speed loaders for this thing um, this is a HKS uh, speed loader that is designed for model 10s uh, Smith & Wesson model 10s what I found out is it actually fits in these quite well um, certain bullet designs work better than others I found that if I'm trying to load like a uh, uh, semi-jacketed hollow points or like uh, big defense rounds or whatever it kind of gets stuck here where like one round will get stuck in the speed loader so it's not perfect but um, you can see the snap caps here sit just fine in this and this is usually what I use to practice you know so I'll just dump them in there and they all go in you know just fine so I've got snap caps in here just demonstrate the double action pull Let's see if I can get that a little bit more on camera there so pull 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 It's, it's not super light. It's not as good as any of my other revolvers, but it's certainly manageable. Um, I, I have, um, I imagine there, there'd be no problems that a uh, regular person can pull the trigger on this just fine until it slips off like that. But um, I do kind of wish the trigger face itself was um, serrated instead of smooth like this. That's just my personal preference. I don't think it matters too, too much. But my finger has slipped off of this a few times if I'm trying to go real, real fast. You know, you're hot, you're sweaty or whatever, you know, um, it could slip, but no. Uh, single action on this is also nothing to write home about. It, it's, it's much lighter, obviously, than the double action pull, and it's pretty crisp but uh, and, and predictable, which is the important part. But um, it's definitely nowhere nice as my Smith or Colt. So there's, there's a little bit of take up in the single action there, too. Um, maybe I can demonstrate that. So it's not like an immediate break. So you just pull, pull, pull. See that little bit of movement there? And then it goes off. So it's not, um, you know, not like my Smith here, which is uh, also clear. Um, well, you know, you go single action on this thing, and man, it just breaks so clean, you know? Fantastic, fantastic. But yeah, um, like I said, know, know what you're buying and understand what comes with the territory, okay? Uh, this is not, not to be, meant to be a match gun, not meant to be a race gun. This is meant to be a purely practical purpose firearm. And I think for that purpose, it fits quite well. Um, so I have, um, despite the limited number of rounds I've put through this thing, I have absolutely nothing really ultra bad to say about this. I really don't. Um, I mean, everything works as it should, as it's intended to. Uh, I've even put a few plus P rounds through this thing, which honestly not too bad. Um, it does sting a little bit more than the regular rounds do, but that's to be expected, of course. It's 38 Special and a Snubby. Um, it's not meant to be super pleasant, so. Uh, but if I was carrying this, you know, uh, I have the full cylinder in here. I have the two speed loaders carrying with me, however which way I'm carrying it. You know, that's plenty of ammo. It's 18 shots and a, um, a, a little Snubby like this where, you know, the research always tells us that most confrontations are ended in like six rounds or so. So, I mean, you got plenty enough right here. There, there, there are some people who don't even carry reloads at all. I do personally because it makes me feel better, but um, some people just carry just a revolver just like this, fully loaded, and that's all they carry. Uh, that's perfectly fine. So, uh, I do intend to carry this at uh, at some point, you know, even though I do own, you know, like a Glock 43 or a Walther PPS M2, which is my main carry. Um, you know, there's just something about having a snubby and being able to carry it, not worrying about magazines or anything like that, or, you know, just being able to pull it out and just keep pulling the, pulling the trigger, you know, rather than have to worry about jams and things like that. So, but this isn't really to talk about the pros and cons of carrying semi-autos versus a revolver. It's just, just wanted to really talk about, um, you know, this revolver in particular and my experience with snubbies and how much I've actually missed having a snubby in my collection. I really, I really have. Um, so in the future, uh, I'm definitely going to uh, paint the, the front sight here with like some uh, orange fluorescent paint uh, right there on the ramp. Because unfortunately I got the model that doesn't have the removable front sight. I'm a bit of a dingus and I, I, I didn't look that up. Um, so I really should have because I, I kind of do want to replace the front sight on this because it's the same color as the frame uh, and the rear sight notch, which makes it, a little, uh, makes it a little difficult to see sometimes. You can see right there the sight picture. It's just it's just a little difficult to pick up, especially if you're on like a, a lighter colored background. Like uh, I'm looking at my fridge there, and it's white. 
it's really hard to pick up the sight picture in the front sight on that versus say you know the oven which is black um, it's, it's it's a little difficult to see at least for me so um, yeah I mean really not too much to say about these things uh, it's 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 a snubby revolver double single action um, modern style swing out cylinder fixed sights there's not much to it um, so yeah, pleasantly surprised again with uh, an, another modern offering from Taurus, and you can tell it's the it's the modern one due to the uh, the fancy little logo they got there at the bull's head. Um, that indicates the newer ones. I know even some of their newer models still have the old uh, Taurus like circle logo and everything, but frankly, I, I I don't like that old logo so much. To me, it, it's it's still like stuck mentally in my head with like poor quality firearms for the most part. Um, and this new logo here uh, is kind of like. The better newer stuff i guess um, if, if you want to view it that way i'm not saying all the new taurus products are like flaw flawless you know and they're, they're totally fine because they're not but um they've definitely come a long way from what they were back in like the 90s and the uh, 2000s and everything where they were just absolute crap so except for the for the the, the old revolvers but that's if you know your taurus history you know what i'm talking about anyway um yeah i'm very happy with this purchase um I don't feel any kind of way about carrying it, you know. It's, it, I would carry it. Uh, that should be enough of, a, of an endorsement for me to uh, feel safe carrying this thing and actually using it in a combat slash life or death defensive situation. So, um, and like I said, still pretty impressed with the accuracy of the shooting of this. Uh, I still want to get some more time to practice, but uh, man, ammo is expensive and it's also hard to find. So, <laughs> I'll do what I can with what I have. Um, Everyone absolutely should practice, though, with their carry guns, um, probably more than they're already doing. But I understand ammo is hard to come by, it's expensive, so on and so forth. We've all been there and felt it. So, yeah, uh, quite happy with this gun. And uh, I'd say it's a, certainly a recommend for anybody else who's also looking at these. I mean, heck, the local gun shop that I bought this from, I think, sold like 14 or 13 of these things like in a month. Um, so they're very, very popular for good reason. Um, you know, even from people who don't really know too much about guns, which I'm, you know, is, is the usual market for, for Tauruses because they're cheap, they're inexpensive, you know, people just want something they can use and then it works. Well, for the most part, I've seen that the new Taurus stuff actually does. So I can't really blame them for wanting to do that. So, um, yeah, not the highest quality thing, but hey, it comes with the territory. You know what you're buying, you get what you pay for. Um, this won't be as, as nice as a Snubby Smith, uh, obviously, but, uh, you know what? It works for me. It works just fine. I've been able to get some good accuracy. Shooting it's pretty pleasant. Um, I enjoy it. So really, what what more can you ask for, right? I mean, sure, the edges could be a little bit more smooth or rounded out. The the, the lockup could be a little bit better. The trigger could be better, right? But it's it's all nitpicky stuff. To somebody who doesn't have anything else, and this is like their first gun that they're relying on for defense, they're not going to care. You're not going to notice it. So with that in mind. Um, like I said, still perfectly happy with my purchase. Um, it's cool. I like having a snubby again. Now I want to get more snubbies. In fact, I know Taurus makes a version of this that's in 22. I may want to get one in 22. Well, just just so I can practice with snubbies again in this particular format, um, you know, this style, uh, just to get some more practice in. Because man, 38 special is not always a uh, a guaranteed thing to come across. And even when you do see it, frankly, I'm not interested in paying the prices that some of these stores have out there. I mean, I've seen. I've seen 38 special for like a box of 50 go for like $48, $50. And I'm like, just no, I, I'm not, I'm not paying that. So anyway, um, so yeah, um, thumbs up for me. It's a cool gun and uh, yeah, I'll have the shooting video up as well coming up and then you'll be able to see some of the targets that I was doing uh, at like 10 yards with like uh, just regular ball ammo versus uh, defensive loads. And you can see the, the, the vast changes in, in where you're actually hitting on the target uh, when you use different defensive loads. So, uh, good important point though, if you're gonna carry this thing is test your defensive ammo, absolutely. You need to know exactly where it's hitting. Just because your sights are on does not mean that's where it's going to hit. So, always, always, always test your defensive ammo to know where it's going to hit based on your point of aim. So, um, just a tip there. Anyways, uh, that's all I gotta say about this gun. Um, thumbs up for me, and we'll see you next time.